Hello, I am Roger Lear, president of Orlando Jobs, and welcome to a session at Hirepalooza. I hope you're having a good time and uh, going around, uh, checking out all the employers, scheduling your own interview. It's very powerful. Today's session, we have a very special guest, Robert Newland with Newland & Associates. And what we're going to be talking about is the job search in a post-COVID-19 world that you are is starting to experience right now. And we're going to get some great tips. But Robert, great to have you today. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're all about. Well, I usually like to hang out with Roger, but when I'm not doing that and, you know, I'm trying to make a living, uh, Newland Associates uh, is an executive search and HR consulting firm. We're uh, here in uh, Orlando, but we also have uh, operations for Florida and Puerto Rico. Outstanding. So let's get right into it, Robert. Uh, man, depending on what side of COVID a business was on, they were either letting go employees or, or hiring employees, but we're now coming up to this post-COVID world. As a job seeker, what is what has changed? What what does a job seeker need to know in a post COVID nineteen job search? Well, and, and I think you know this. It, it's a job seeker's market right now, and and that if you're job seeking, that is a great place to be in. And what I want people to understand is that that doesn't last forever. Uh, it's it's going to turn. But we see, and this is cyclical, right? So what we see in these things is usually it turns into a job seeker market and. Basically, there are more jobs and people seeking for work, but then as more people get comfortable to get into the job market, then it begins to evolve again. So actually, it's a great time to be on the market right now. It really is. And, and what we're seeing out there, especially in Central Florida, is more jobs than there are people looking for jobs. Why do you think that is, Robert? What, what's going on? These, these uh, companies, especially our hospitality industry, our restaurant and food industry, um, our logistics industry, or their healthcare industry, they're all crying for, for people to come work for them. What do you well, see there? I think there are a number of things. And, and one that people talk about is, you know, you're getting these unemployment benefits and you didn't have to actually look for work. And, and that, you know, if you are going to do the math, if you make more money than working that working, then why would you? Right? So I, I respect that. You know, if the system allows you to do that. But, but there's also more to it than that. Uh, you also have a number of people that have abandoned industries. And, and so you also have to rebuild that marketplace either because they moved geographically to another location or they said, I'm not gonna be in, in this industry, I'm gonna be in another industry. So I give you an example. If you were in hospitality and you moved to logistics because Amazon had a lot of jobs, you're not really gonna go back to logistics, right? I mean, to, to hospitality. So right. I think some industries are going to be challenged also long-term, not just because of unemployment uh, benefits, but also because of shift of people moving from their industry. Yeah, that uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I uh, you know, to get back to the job, the job seeker uh, person uh, in the, the power, I call it the power they have that a lot of times they don't have yeah. it. As a job seeker, you know, what we're seeing is, uh, especially for some of the jobs here in Central Florida, you're going to be able to interview, get get bonuses for staying, get bonuses for applying. Um, not only that, uh, you're probably going to get in before the herd. And what I mean by that is everybody's sitting on the sidelines right now. And if you can break away from whatever it is, and I know there's child care issues, there's uh, a lot of folks are, are uh, you know, still don't want to go back to the workplace. Uh, there's all types of reasons people are on the sidelines. But if you can step away from that, you can position yourself in a company right now uh, at the beginning of uh, the surge. And when things get back to full employment, you, you, your, your career can probably skyrocket a little bit quicker. Oh, yeah, and, 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 and what you say makes sense to me, especially when you think about if you have skills, right, and you want to move, move up the food chain, you get in now, there's gonna be more opportunity for growth within the organization that if you get in later. Uh, get in now, and if you have some management skills and group leader supervisor skills, you're getting now as they hire more, you've been there longer, you've demonstrated your leadership, you're more likely to call to be called to lead, and if you show up later. Uh, so 
I can't emphasize this enough. It's a really great opportunity to get into a job right now. But I will say this, Roger, I, I'd be really careful with signing bonuses. I know people can be lower because of that, but make sure that you are in a job that you really like, meaning that if you're gonna find a job in say, you mentioned logistics, right? Uh, and maybe there's a good signing bonus, but you really love hospitality. Don't do logistics just because of signing bonus because you're gonna be unhappy. Choose hospitality. Now is the time where you can choose more than say a year from now. So I don't think the signing bonus should be the driver for, make, for the decision if it's there, great. But make sure that you pick the industry that you really love, that you're passionate about, because you're likely going to do better, you're going to succeed, and you're going to make more progress in that organization. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a that's an excellent point. And and job seekers, you know, the job search right now, you're going to have a portfolio of jobs that you can apply to, and they're probably going to you're probably going to get your interviews pretty quick. And your interviews were either going to be video. Uh, as a Zoom call or whatever the case might be, which is the new, which will be a new norm for first interviews, I think. What do you think about that? I mean, videos will, uh, is the day of going to an office, getting dressed up and waiting in the waiting room over for the first interviews? Uh, I think for many jobs, it is, it's amazing how quickly my, we are migrating to, to uh, you know, phone interviews and now video interviews. But as you know, you know, there are companies now that are doing assessments based on your videos when you're interviewed. So we're migrating very quickly into that. It's no longer something that was going to happen in the future. It's currently, you know, the present. You look at companies, you know, like Anthem, you know, they're using video interviews all the time. That is a major employer in this community. So, yeah, that is the present. That's not the future. Uh, in terms of where they're going to work, it still depends on, you know, your customer facing you know, you're going to have to go work somewhere. But we're also seeing a lot of shifts in the types of jobs that were office jobs that now you can telecommute to some of those jobs. We know of employers that have a lot of square footage, you know, in those big box buildings for white collar jobs that are saying, okay, you can work from home. And I would also say that when you see that, you also want to factor in when you're doing the job and, the, you know, the job searching and your opportunities, you know, what is your, your cost? say of transportation and the cost of time. You know, if, if you're going to work from home and maybe earn a little bit less, but you don't have to commute two hours a day, save on gas, tolls, et cetera, maybe it is a better job. So you want to factor those things as well. And then are you comfortable working from home? If you are somebody that needs to be interacting with people and you live on your own, maybe that's not a good choice for you, right? So also want to factor that in, make sure that you work in an environment that not only pays you good money now, but it's an environment where you want to work, be working in the future. Sure. Let me ask you this question, and yeah. uh, it comes up a lot in job seekers. Uh, uh, they're they're in, in the interview question. The interview question will be this: yeah. Hey, I noticed on your resume that you've had two or three jobs in the last year, or you haven't been working, or whatever the case might be. The normal excuse will be, well, COVID, I lost my job because of COVID, and that very well could be true. If you're a job seeker and someone asks you that question, how do you answer that question in a post-COVID world when you... Well, you know, that's that's a great question. And, and as you know, one of our services is providing career transition to laid off workers. And so we've been coaching around that for a long, long time. Years ago moving from job to job was seen as something very negative. If you were not at a job for 15 years, it was seen as a negative. I think that now because of all these constant mergers and acquisitions, you see people more often spending three, five years on a job than you know the good old 10, 15, 20 years. However, while I think it is okay in 2019 to say, you know, I was shifting jobs because of this situation, I think your history has got to be bona fide. And 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 you probably don't want to use that explanation as a reason why if before COVID-19, you were also changing jobs every so often. Nobody's going to buy into that. I think that happens. You have to look into it and say, why am I not lasting in a job? Maybe it's something I need to fix and I shouldn't start. I should stop blaming, you know, my employer. Because uh, we see that too. And, and, and uh, you know, in our recruiting division, we see that. Somebody tells us, you know, 
this last three jobs were, you know, not the right fit. But then you look back 15 years and it's like no job was, you know, right. A good right. Fit. And, and that's okay. Just fix it from now on, but, but you need to address it. But yeah, I, I think it's reasonable to expect, especially when you see people that are doing gigging, right? Uh, meaning, you know, I was doing DoorDash and then I was doing Zamover and I was doing this, trying to make, make ends meet. I think that employers respect that you're a go-getter, that you're putting in the effort. I, I'd say don't be ashamed to show that you were trying to make a living for your family. Be proud of that. And if you ever come across an employer that kind of dings you for that, that's not a place where you want to work. I think you should work in places that respect your ethic. Yeah. And the uh, the empathy that employers have, because uh, the, the thing that's different about this than anything we've ever experienced is everybody somehow has been touched by COVID one way or the other and, okay. and so forth. And, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, the job that you're applying to, it's the skill set and the enthusiasm and the soft skills yep. that you bring to that job that get you hired anyway. And um, uh, and I love what you said. If an employer frowns upon uh, you picking up uh, uh, an Uber job or something like that in the interim to to make you know to make ends meet, well, that is an employer you probably don't want to work for if no. you have the other skills there. Robert, uh, one of the greatest things is, is uh, your firm has a uh, uh, program that really can help. Can you just kind of highlight what that is? And I know you've got to share your screen a little bit, but for job seekers, this is an option and you'll be able to click on the link below to get more information about this. Uh, but it's, sure. a, it's probably one of the most helpful tools that I've ever seen assembled that can help you with every single piece of the job search so you can have some of these answers that we're talking about. Sure, we'll do the five the five minute uh, version of it. Let me know if you can see uh, uh, my screen. I'm gonna share it uh, now. Can you see my screen? Yeah, you are good to go. Cool, so I mean, it's called Power My Career Online Solutions. It's basically a self-service portal for job search. Um, something that we work with you, Roger, on. We have also partnered last year with Career Source for some other workforce to do it. It's a soup to nuts job search tool. Um, some of the things that you can do here that are pretty amazing. You can work around resumes. If you want to do you know, a campaign around social media uh, to job search, you know, feedback around interviewing, these are things that are really, really great. Um, we also hold in the system a bunch of live webinars, which are also on demand. Uh, so if you look at some of on the AMAN webinars, there are things like, you know, exploring self-employment, writing a resume, managing stress, um, using social media for job search. These are all either live or on demand, which is really, really cool. And probably one of the things that I love the most is, is our toolbox. Uh, for example, if you're looking for uh, recruiters, uh, we have a recruiter database in here that you can, you know, you click on this and it's going to open up another window and you can actually do a search by industry, by geography, et cetera. So if you go to search executive search firms, you can put all that in here. So if you're job searching, it can help you narrow your search, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you're researching organizations, don't know where to go, we provide two databases. One is called the NB Hoovers and the other one is Global. They're both really great databases and you can get news on organizations that are coming into town and new jobs, which is really, really great. Um, Power My Interview is it's a partnership with them with uh, HireVue where you can actually record your interview skills here. So you practice interview. You can do that here and then see how you're doing in terms of your performance interviewing online, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and I think that's such a big, uh, such a big deal moving forward to be able to really learn how to video interview and knock it out of the ballpark, just as you would in a face-to-face -face interview. For sure, I would say if you're if you're if you're likely to interview online, which you are, don't wing it. You know, use a tool like this, which is really going to help you. Um, remember, the the it's a job seekers market, but as more people are, more people warm up to the market it becomes less of a job seeker market and there's more competition. The more competition you have, the better you need to perform. Another really cool tool, which we call Power My Job Search, 
it's a great, another uh, great, great partnership. Um, and what you're able to do here, and this is Roger, you know, this is my favorite. In here, you can copy and paste here to the left your resume. And here to the right, you can copy and paste the job requisition on an online you know, uh, opportunity. Here's the thing, there may be 500 people applying. Um, you need to work with the AI bots that are ranking your resume or your application by utilizing this tool, it's gonna to tell you how your resume or application fares again, the job rack, and you can tweak it so that, as I like to say, you can be candidate number 17 on the list versus candidate number 317. Because you know, recruiters are not gonna look at all 500 applicants. They're gonna look at the top. So little things like this, and I'll stop now. Uh, I think little things like this are really, really useful to make you succeed on the job market. At the end of the day, what I like to say to people is, there are jobs, but use the tools available to you to get the best possible job. It's like when you're house hunting, you're gonna buy a house, try and get the best possible deal. Don't just yeah. get a house, get the best possible deal. Well, the other the other thing that I always uh, I, I always tell job seekers, you you guys aren't professional job seekers, yeah, right. And uh, you know we're so fortunate to have Robert here today to to show not only you know his wisdom but to share the the technology tools that will certainly be able to help you in your job search. And it's not just about getting a job. You guys can go get jobs. That's not an, yeah. ever the issue. It's getting a great job or that job that you know you're great for, but you don't realize why they didn't, the employer never called you back and you think it's because they didn't like you. Most of the time it's because the resume wasn't formatted correctly or, yeah. or you got in the game too late or so many other reasons, not you. If everything was optimized to, to that and which you guys, it's just so hard to tell you what that is because everybody's situation is a little bit different, but there's there's the education and stuff to get that. Stuff. Let, me, let me put it to you this way. You know, you know this. Most people tell you that they really suck at dating, right? Because it's not something they're doing all the time, right? Well, job searching is like that. It's, unless you're getting fired every other week, this is not something you practice often. So if it right. isn't, then you know, you need to prepare for it so that you can succeed when you've got there in the market. So anyway, well, this is this has been fantastic. Is uh so I'll leave it. If you if, if you're looking at a job seeker today and they said, Hey, what is the best tip you can give me in a post-COVID job search world? What would your tip be, Robert? I tell him, listen to Roger D. Lear every day, because you're rock, my friend. You're rock. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a paid commercial, by the way. So that's. Uh, he is. I've known him for a long time. And, and this, listen, the stuff you do for this community is really, really wonderful. I know your heart's in the right place. It's not just a business for you. You have strong, strong commitment to Central Florida. And I respect and I appreciate that. So much. Well, well, getting uh, in leaders like yourself to help help spread the word of how these job seekers can connect and understand that it's, I wish it was easy as just handing a resume and getting an interview and getting a job, but it isn't. And uh, in the post world, COVID world, um, right now, job seekers, you have a great advantage today. Get rocking in your job search. Yeah. Thanks again, Robert, and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. And job seekers, Make sure you schedule your interviews. Um, you get the, you have the power. Go into those career booths and you see what times they have, and you schedule the interview with the recruiters. So, have a great day and. Thank you, uh, Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much.